what do you think of that uh, lady squ uh, squirting the hose on the homeless lady? Um, I think it was a dude, right? It dude was squirting a dude. It was a guy yeah. squirting the I think everybody woman. is at the edge of... Right. Of their yeah. frustration. True, like, it's true. like you could say, my gosh, that's heartless. Well, maybe that person gets up every day and sees human shit on his, on his front door. You just watched Fox News host Greg Gutfeld justify violence against an unhoused woman. He just said that on national television. It's not necessarily below him, but still it's pretty... Shocking to see someone think that that was okay. Now, that clip that we just watched was actually the culmination of a long rant that Greg Gutfeld went on where he said more disparaging and incorrect things about unhoused people. And we'll play more from that segment. But first, I want to give you some additional context in case you didn't see that clip that went viral. So the piece of shit who you saw in that video spraying the woman is actually the owner of a gallery in San Francisco named Collier Gwynn. And he pretended to be sorry, but of course, only after he went viral. Quote, what they saw is very regrettable. I feel awful, not just because I want to get out of trouble, but because I put a tremendous amount of effort into helping this woman. Sure, we totally believe that you want to help her after we saw the look in your eyes as you sprayed her. He felt no remorse whatsoever, didn't even see her as a fellow human being. He treated her worse than people treat stray dogs or cats. Just, I'm not buying it. But he spoke to local reporter K uh, of KPIX, uh, Betty Yu, and you're going to see the same excuses. And um, it's just, it it's gross, but let's listen. I'm out there once again, cleaning her mess, washing it down, trying to clean up stuff. And I just snapped. I was watering and around her. And I just snapped when she went off in her belligerent, you know, tongues and stuff. And I just snapped and I pulled the hose up higher and I sprayed her. And when I look at myself on the film, I can't even believe that that's me. But I didn't know what else to do. It was getting so frustrating. And I know that that's why I snapped. And you know, I've never done anything like that to a human being. I don't feel that way. I've been, you know, I've always been called the, the, uh, the fix it guy who tried to bring both sides together and hear the stories. And uh, we tried really hard, and um, I did something terrible. It was awful, and I, I can see it. I mean, nobody can see it clearer than I can. Not buying it, not buying it at all. He's only sorry that he got caught. That's evidence, because somebody who just momentarily had a lapse in their judgment and got frustrated would have just went, sprayed her real quick, right? That's not justifiable, too. That would be a controversy in and of itself if he only did that. But he was sitting there spraying her with a look in his eyes that you can just tell he thought that this was not a fellow human being. She was scum, and this is how we treat scum. We spray them with water hoses. That's the look in his eyes. So uh, I'm sorry, I'm not buying a single word that this individual is saying. And the reporter talked to him, but has any reporter spoke to the woman who he assaulted and also insulted? He also tried to justify this action by claiming that she was psychotic. And it's just, I have to really spell this out because the irony is going to be lost on some people, I'm sure. The man who was spraying another human being who he believed to be a nuisance with the water hose claimed that she's the one who's psychotic, not him. It's just, it's so unbelievable. The details of this story are genuinely infuriating. And we need to get the perspective from the woman. This man who assaulted that woman needs to be held accountable because this is not okay. This is not okay. Now, the San Francisco police chief, Bill Scott, tweeted about this, saying the incident on Montgomery Street has been transferred to San Francisco Police Department Investigations Bureau. The process from here is to collect evidence, interview witnesses, develop the case, and present it to the district attorney. Now, that response to me is bizarre, because if you, on video, caught somebody decking another person, they would immediately be handcuffed and taken to jail. But... Because he's spraying her with a water hose and because she's unhoused, it seems like this isn't taken as seriously when, what are we doing? He should at least go to jail. But nope, there's got to be an investigation to determine that, yep, spraying an unhoused person with a water hose 
is bad. It's just, it's shocking to me. Now, according to the uh, SF list, he could face a battery charge, which he should. You should be legally held accountable for doing that to another human being. But people who saw that video were absolutely outraged and he hasn't faced legal accountability, but the public backlash has absolutely been swift and severe. KPIX reporter Betty Yu writes on Twitter, the owner said he's flooded with death threats and his business has been vandalized since the video went viral. Now she shared a video of him getting confronted by someone and that video is very, very satisfying to watch. You're not very sorry. You're a privileged white man you know who sprayed somebody with the water hose hey, instead of offering them some kind of help. See, you want me to have a statement or talk to you? There is no talk. Well, I want you to no. shut down and I want you to move away because you treated somebody inhumanely. And anybody who would treat another human being like trash, like an animal, doesn't deserve to be right here. I wish you I wish you would look at the mind. Spraying people down with the water hose. You, that, you, it doesn't matter who doesn't get no help. You don't spray people down with water hose, right? You can take that with your white privilege and go somewhere. There is nothing on the planet Earth that requires you to spray somebody down with a water hose. You're right. I'm right here. I wish you sprayed me down with a water hose. Not all heroes wear capes, but that man who confronted him is a hero. He said everything that I was feeling while watching that video. I don't care what you have to say, what justification you have to use. That's not acceptable. You can't spray another human being with a hose because you want to shoo them away. It's just people in this country, the mentality, and this man, this monster is a microcosm of a broader issue, but people in the United States, they just don't necessarily, and I'm generalizing here, not everyone feels this way, but they don't really view unhoused people as people. If you watch Fox News segments, and we've talked about this before, the way that they talk about them is as if they are animals, and they're like rats, and you've got to find some ways to get them to go away. It's just, it's so sad. It's deeply, deeply heartbreaking. But I want to get back to that Fox News segment because you saw what the end of that segment was, but let's watch what he said before he was asked about that by Geraldo Rivera, because what he says about unhoused people is just deeply moronic. I don't know how else to describe it. I can't be more charitable than that. I would support this. Uh, it's what I've been talking about for a while, an autonomous zone for people who wish to be homeless. This is where you can go and practice this experimental lifestyle, right? And if, uh, if you're back in the city panhandling, uh, we'll take you back there or we'll get you help. But you're going to go back to that place mm -hmm. because that's where it's legal. That's where it's legal. And it could get really ugly and gross. Yeah. It could be a terror. It could be like the road warrior times five. But you know what? That's what they want in the city. They cannot live on your street. Right. They have to right. ex exercise their lifestyle somewhere else. And we will help you. We will help you. I will help you. Okay. Well, what do you think of that uh, lady squ uh, squirting the hose? And you know what he says next. He goes on to justify an assault on an unhoused woman. Now, what he said there is wrong because he's pretty explicitly suggesting that people choose to be unhoused when, no, nobody chooses to sleep on the streets. It's not like, oh, this is some new quirky lifestyle that I'm choosing to adopt because I'm different. You become unhoused because you lose everything. I just, I feel like we shouldn't have to explain this, right? I get that he's insulated in this bubble and he's really wealthy, but all you have to do is look at the situation and see that these are not people who enjoy being in that predicament, who choose to be in that predicament. And his solution is to round up all the homeless people and put them into one autonomous zone because he thinks that if they all lived in their own filth, then they'd choose to not be in this predicament. They choose to do better for themselves. It's not like they're making this choice. They have nowhere else to go. You can't Thanos snap them out of existence, Greg. But that's what some of these people want. And there is a solution, but that's not the solution. The solution is housing. Give unhoused people houses and the problem is solved. And if you think that that's too expensive, well, let me point you to a 2019 article from Vox that illustrated how it's actually more cost efficient because believe it or not, trying to criminalize homelessness and police them out of existence is actually more expensive than housing them. Pawning off homeless people on emergency rooms, paying for anti-homeless architecture, all of this costs money. So all that money can be used to house them and then 
everyone's happy. But yet, people try to concoct these weird solutions or pseudo solutions because they're not really solutions where they're like, oh, just round them all up and um, put them in an autonomous zone or push them into a different area out of sight, out of mind. I just don't want to see them. Again, we're talking about human beings here. I can't stress that enough. These are actual human beings just like you and I. They have desires. They feel pain. They suffer just like all of us. They're human beings. So as we have these conversations, we need to remember that. And we heard from the uh, gallery owner here, but we didn't get to hear from that woman. I don't know if any reporter got to speak with her. I couldn't find an interview with her, but we need the perspective of unhoused people because they're not just choosing to annoy you or be visual, um, visually displeasing. Like They're in this predicament because of the system that we live in. And living on the streets only exacerbates the problems that they were already dealing with. Urban Institute explains, people living on the street for long periods often suffer from co-occurring mental health and substance use disorders. They are criminalized for being homeless, racking up nuisance crimes, such as trespassing, panhandling, public drinking and urination, and sleeping in public spaces, which can lead to a street-to-jail cycle that is hard to break. Street life is punishing. People are frequently victimized, adding to a lifetime Time of trauma that can come with being poor. Chronic physical health problems like hypothermia are sometimes a consequence of homelessness, while others such as diabetes are difficult to treat when sleeping on the street. So this is what they're dealing with. So I don't think it's too much to ask to have just a little bit of empathy. But no, the response from Fox News and people like Collier Gwynn is to treat them like animals or worse than animals and spray them with water, shoo them away, when the solution is pretty clear. Give them housing, and that's it. It's solved. I mean, I feel like it seems a little bit like an oversimplification to say that, but it really is that simple. Housing the unhoused is going to solve this issue. It's a win-win-win. They win, we win, and these people who hate unhoused people win because... The issue is solved there. They won't be loitering on the streets in front of businesses like the nuisance that you think they are. So housing is the issue. And we just need to try to recalibrate this conversation so it goes towards the solution rather than the demonization and the lack of empathy. But, you know, this is kind of the environment that we're living in where we don't necessarily view fellow human beings as equals. We view them as inferiors. Even if we're all being exploited by the system, the people who are the least fortunate, who find themselves in the worst predicament imaginable, they're still demonized by folks just a little bit more advantaged than them. And you would think that there would be at least a little bit more solidarity, but there's nothing. There's, there's, there's nothing there, and it's really disheartening to see. So this whole story is depressing, but nonetheless, um, when people like Greg Gutfeld tell you who they are and they say we should basically be fine with violence against unhoused people understand that they're telling you that they're pieces of shit so believe them when they say that they are that